Continue our worship right now. Jesus, we come before you here. We invite you into this place to begin with, Lord, to have your way to move amongst your people. We love you and we adore you. And Lord, right now, we just want to offer up all that we are in exchange for all that you are, Lord. No holding back this morning, Lord. No holding out. When we put everything on the table, Lord, bring everything to the altar, anything that may compete with allegiance for you is first place in our life, Lord, when we, when we would bring and crucify those now, pick up our crosses and follow you every day, this day and every day, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Whoa.
Amen. Thank you to our worship team for leading us this morning. If the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Thanks be to God that you're here. We're all here. You're watching online. We've got folks outside today. It's a gorgeous day outside. This is a day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. My name is Stephen Street, and I am the senior pastor here, and I'm glad that you're attending with us today. If this is your first time here at Misty Creek, whether you're in person with us on campus or online with us, we hope that you will check in with us. We have an online check-in card if you're watching live this morning. We have a connection card here in our Welcome Center. We would love for you to check in with us, fill out that connection card, and we have a gift for all first-time folks that are on campus today. A couple of announcements I want to make, um, give, give to your attention today. First of all, You've been wondering where your long sleeve shirts are. If you've ordered them, they are here. And you can pick them up right outside under the tent. Uh, they're in bags and have your names on them. So they're ready for you to pick up your shirts today if you pre-ordered those. So glad that we had those in. I also want to let you know we have an Ash Wednesday service that will be in this building. It will be on uh, March the 2nd at 7 p.m. We hope you will be a part of that. We have next steps for those who are interested in learning more about Misty Creek Community Church, our mission, our vision, and how we began. And we'll do that next Sunday at noon. It'll be uh, down in the basement of the chapel. And we look, would like for you to RSVP for that because we are having lunch. And that's for all those who are interested in learning more about the church and possibly becoming a member of Misty Creek Community Church. I want to uh, welcome with us today, um, all the way from South Carolina, uh, Bob and Gigi Carter are with us, a surprise visit today, so we're glad to have them. Uh, we support them. They are, they are missionaries, and uh, they are part of the Word by Heart uh, ministry, and would love for you to engage with them um, at the conclusion of the service to get to know them, learn a little bit more about them. We're just nice surprised that they're here, so thankful that they're with us today. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, family Promise, yes, and we have Lolly here and Lisa both who are coordinating our Family Promise efforts. Uh, we will be involved with volunteering and providing meals and gift cards and, and staying overnight. And that starts next Sunday. And if you'll see them after the service today, you can directly sign up with them. There's also a Sign Up Genius that you can uh, click on and sign up that way, and they can give you some direction. We sent that out through the email, through GroupMe. So we really need to step up and volunteer for that. So please, please see them after the service today or click on that link and sign up to volunteer or provide gift cards or meals. There's a whole lot of things you can do. So we're very thankful to partner uh, with Sandy Springs United Methodist Church and other churches in the area, including uh, Mount Vernon um, Presbyterian. That's just right behind us over here. So thankful for that. A lot of other things going on in the life of the church. I hope you'll take time to read through those. We have our Power Hour of Prayer every Thursday night. Read about that. It is anointed. We are having an amazing time praying together, and the Holy Spirit's moving in a phenomenal way. Glad that you're here. One last thing. You probably saw this in your seat. You may say this is really early, but we already have Vacation Bible School on the calendar. Folks, we want to invite every single child possible in this community, and you can help us do that. Take this with you. Take some with you from the welcome station. Hand them out. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. Because I know you may be thinking, July's a long ways away. It's really not that far away. So get that date out to folks. We need volunteers as well. Because we expect uh, at least, this is a lot, about 100 children we're expecting. We're going to try to get as many kids as we can to be a part of this wonderful program. I'm glad you're here.
How y'all doing? Good to see you. You know, this is a prayer uh, this morning. If there are any of you that are that are tired and weary in spirit, this this world can beat us down, can it? It can make us weary in spirit. But we have a God who is faithful, who has promised to never leave us alone. So listen to the words of encouragement to all of us this morning, but especially if, you, if you're one, if you're just beat down, man, this, this is for you. Our brother David writes, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. And then we can tell our souls this this morning. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Let me remind you, soul, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. He is my Savior, and he is my God. Let me pray. Jesus, we love you so much, Lord. And, uh, we all do sometimes feel tired and weary and broken. And it's because we're aliens and strangers in this world, Lord. You know that. We long to be with you, Daddy. We long to be in your presence, Abba. But you don't leave us here alone as orphans. Lord, you come beside us. And you've created us for good works, Lord. And you don't leave us uh, in our own strength to try and do these works. No. No, you send us the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Comforter, our friend to empower us to do these things. Lord, even greater things, Jesus, you said we would do than you did walking this earth. And so we thank you for that, Lord. May all of the things, these great things that you allow us to do, that you empower us to do, they're not for our glory. They're for yours, Lord. And so we'll pray for a double portion of your strength this morning for those that are tired, for those that are weary. Lord, that you would ease our burdens and that you would uh, give us the perspective of, uh, of the Old Testament prophet with his uh, assistant when he looked around and said, we are outnumbered, we are outnumbered, we will be slaughtered. And he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see you. And God did open his eyes, and he could see that they were surrounded by angel armies. As he said, greater are those that are with us than those that are against us. And that is our promise this morning, Jesus. So help us to lay claim to that, to believe that, to see that. Open our eyes, Lord, to know that there are your angel armies surrounding us and empowering us to do your will and your works. We love you so much. And we pray now that you would be our vision that you would be our wisdom, that you would be our strength and our power in all that we do, Lord. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. In God's children's name.
Now let us hear the word of the Lord. This is Luke 5, 1 through 11. Jesus provides a miraculous catch of fish, which was awesome on the Chosen series that we watched recently. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to, sp to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. But he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats on the shore, left everything, and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning. Would you uh, bow your heads and uh, pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Doug. We praise you for who you are, the eternal God. 
You are our strength and our defense. We humble ourselves before you, and we declare in our weakness, you are Lord. There is no other like you. God, help us to realize we're talking to you, the king of the universe that has all authority and all power, whose sovereignty rules and reigns over all things. Help us not to underestimate you in our praying. Help us to recognize your power as we pray for and serve others. We don't want to lead our lives in our own power, in our own strength, in our own ability. Forgive us, God, for our tendency to do that. Lord, help us to trust in you. Help us to seek you. God, give us greater faith. Lord, help us to live with trust in your power to do that which would be impossible otherwise. Father, forgive us for questioning you when we pray to you that maybe you won't come through for us. We trust, O oh God, that you have the power to do all things. Forgive us for the times we have placed our hopes in anything other than you. Forgive us for the times that we've tried to fix things in our own power, for not taking the time to rest or coming to you first with our needs and burdens. We pray you realign our hearts to yours and grant us strength for this day in you and you alone. Father, your grace is sufficient, and we will not grow weary in doing good. We are strong in you, Lord, and in your mighty power. Thank you for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Thank you that you promise to give the worried, the hurried, the pressured, and stressed out rest and peace for their souls if we'll just come before you. Thank you that you already know all our concerns and you care for us. We're so grateful for your reminder that we don't have to carry it all on our own. Thank you for the refreshing that comes from your spirit, filling us with joy, covering us with a shield, leading us forward with hope. Equip us to be those who take notice of others who seem weary and burdened also. Help us to slow down, to take the time to point others to you. Jesus, we find rest in you. We need the pardon you give for our sin, and we need your help to walk with God. We couldn't do it yesterday, we can't do it tomorrow, and we can't do it today. Help us in such a way that we find rest for our souls as we abide in Jesus, as we walk with Jesus, as we learn what it means to follow Jesus. We do not fight a physical battle, but a spiritual one. And with each act of compassion, we build your kingdom. Help us to be kingdom builders today. Our flesh and our heart may fail, but God is the strength of our heart and our portion forever. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the body and blood of your dear Son. We pray that through this you would make us prosper with strong faith towards you and with fervent love among us all. Dear God, we thank you for the power of your word and your presence over our lives. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper, for greater are you who is in us than he who is in the world. We pray that you cast every threat and accusation, every abusive word and attack hurled our way. We pray that, you, that, that with you nothing is impossible, that you are loving and gracious, full of mercy and might. We trust in you alone to rise up strong on our behalf. Thank you for being our defender and strong tower, our refuge and our strength. Thank you for you. Thank you that you fight for us today, and in our weakness you make us strong. Now please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth it is as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, I from evil. Mine is the glory, power, the glory forever. Amen. I 
God is our rock and he is here. Do you sense his presence in this place this morning? Isn't that what draws you here into this sacred place, Misty Creek Community Church? It's the spirit of God. But I have an inclining that some of you are not just tired, but you are weary. And some of you are just plain worn out. So we're going off script. As you know, we do that occasionally at Misty Creek. I want you to hear what Jesus says about it, not what Stephen says about it, but what Jesus says. He says this in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He says, come unto me, all of you who are weary, tired, and heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke. Now, yoke, the word for yoke is take me, take my spirit upon you, and I will give you rest, not anybody else. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and I will give you rest. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And I will give you rest for your what? Your weary soul. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you think that Jesus ever was tired or weary, worn down? Absolutely. Yes. Do you recall at all what he would do when he felt that way? 
he would go off to himself. Now, usually it was for a brief time because there were crowds of people needing Jesus, wanting Jesus. Do you remember what God did after creation on the seventh day? Anybody? He rested. So what does that tell you? The busiest person that ever existed, Jesus Christ, took time to rest and to be still. God Almighty, the creator, the lawgiver, the sustainer of all of humankind, needed to rest. Really? Yes. You do too. Let me share some statistics with you. This is a study that came out last year. It's disturbing but it's not surprising to me, and it will not be to you. The World Health Organization did a study of people around the world who worked 55 or more hours per week compared to those who worked 35 to 40 hours per week. We've got some people in this room, including the man standing on this stage, that have worked more than 55 hours this week. And guess what? I love it. I do. I don't even consider it work, folks. It's a calling. It's a vocation. But many of you are working yourself to death. And here's the statistics to prove it. Are you ready for this? Aren't you glad you came? Aren't you glad you're watching? So the study covered health and workplace data from the 1970s to 2018 and included workers in 154 countries. They concluded that people working 55 or more hours each week faced an estimated 35% higher risk of a stroke and a 17% higher risk of dying from heart disease compared to people following the widely accepted standard of working 35 to 40 hours in a week. May I ask you something? Whoever decided there had to be 40 hours in the work week, don't you want to beat that person up, whoever it was? Who made that standard? I'm just curious, but anyway... They also estimated that more than 745,000 people worldwide died in 2016 from physical stress of working excess hours. Those are some scary numbers. Of course, that study was completed before the recession caused by COVID-19. A lot of companies, they cut their workforce. And the remaining employees worked longer hours to compensate. Also, many people began working from home, which made it harder to leave work at work. The result, working unpaid overtime. Now, we all know, well, at least it used to be that our nation was a nation of rise and grind. And for many folks in here, it's still that way, isn't it? Hard work, it's in our DNA, Many of us are wired that way. That's just who we are. <laughs> but so is being tired. We complain about how busy and tired we are. We compare our busy schedules and we shrug our shoulders. Oh, well, that's just how life is. What can you do about it? How many of you have said this week, I'm tired? Come on. I asked the teenagers this. Every one of them raised their hand quickly high up in the air. Some even raised both hands like, hallelujah. Um, I don't know if I've ever said hallelujah for being tired. Have you even said, I'm tired today? Anybody said it today? Yes. And is there a big difference between being tired and being sleepy? Yes. Is there a difference between tired, sleepy, and being weary? Have you ever felt weary? Anybody feel weary right now? Come on, be honest. That way your pastors can know how to, how to minister to you a little bit better. If we know that you're weary and that you're tired and that you're not holding that in and keeping that to yourself. Because these statistics say that if you're weary, tired, overworked, that something could happen to you physically. And all that you've done could be in vain. <laughs> that would stink, wouldn't it? You know, i got to tell you, folks. As someone who works in the hospital system, and I, and I work with hospice care, I encounter people at the end of their life, and they will say things to me like, I've been working 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week. I'm not even going to get to retire. Because all the work has drained everything out of them that they now have coronary heart disease. Or they have stress to the point that they have other physical ailments, and they're not going to make it to their retirement. They're not going to make it to be with their grandchildren. Because they're so focused on the rise and grind and being wired to work, 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 make a living. 
Hmm. When I was going through my clinical pastoral education training, a seasoned doctor was training us in diagnostic techniques. He wrapped up his training by saying, never ask your patients if they feel tired. I'm like, why wouldn't you do that? Somebody asked, why wouldn't you do that? He said, because the doctor said this. He says, everybody feels tired. The doctor said, I'm tired all the time. And he says, and I do the green shake. You know what the green shake is? It's nasty. <laughs> and he, he takes the supplements and he exercises and does the treadmill. But he says, he's still tired all the time. He says he watched the four-hour Dr. Oz special and did what he said. And he's still tired. He took the Gen X medic medication or whatever it is. He still feels tired. You know, I have observed the exhaustion amongst those in the medical field over the last two years. It's a lot, folks. And I have a hunch that you're exhausted too. Many of us have COVID fatigue. Some are still getting over the effects of actually having the virus. There's some that are watching with us now that have tested positive for COVID and they're not here today. Thank you. And we continue to ask you, please be responsible. We are blessed to gather and be in person. But if you do feel sick in any way, please watch online. Let's continue to be responsible, folks. I know we've kind of let our guard down, and I understand that. I was watching the NBA dunk contest and three-point contest last night. I didn't see anybody with a mask on. I was shocked with all those people there. But then I thought, people are letting their guard down. Just be wise and be careful, okay? Be responsible. So you're, you're tired of hearing about it, aren't you? Some are just stressed out because their life has been on hold for so long and they don't know what to do. You've not been the same since 2019, have you? I believe that doctor is right about everybody feeling fatigued. And tired. That's normal, right? It's a hazard of modern life. I'm not against hard work. I thank God for the opportunity to work and use the skills and energy that God gave me to make a difference in the world. I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm so thankful that my parents instilled in me from an early age the hard work ethic. I can't remember a time that I didn't work. I think I worked when I wasn't supposed to. I was too young, but I was still working and getting paid for it always have worked. I'm so proud that many of our young people are working and learning responsibility. I think we may have, oh, look at there. You might know some of these young people, Jaden and, and Nia and SJ there working in our, at our local Italian right down the road. I hope you go and visit them at some point. So proud of them. We keep going through these slides. I'll go through this quickly. Our own Brianna, she works at Salada. I always say Salida, but it's Salada. I always get it wrong. And uh, she does a great job there. We're proud of her. Yeah, there's the gang there putting together blessing bags, learning responsibilities, serving others. There's other ways to work and engage, and thankful that they do that. There they are with all the blessing bags, and, and um, we need to put more of those together because we're almost out. So just thankful that they are, are learning that work ethic. You can keep going if you would, please. There you go. There they are again, working at the register. Yep. Look at those cookies to the left. You know you want one. And they're good, I know from experience. Yes, there's our daughter working, working at camp. She still worked at camp this past weekend up in Camp Glisten in Dahlonega. Um, that picture got in there randomly somehow, but that's working in the hospital, and, and that's my hazmat suit. The only thing I don't have on, I was supposed to put something over my shoes, and I didn't do it, and the overhouse nurse, she laid into me, man. Where's, where's, where's your things on your shoes? I was like, oh, give me a break. That causes fatigue. You know what I'm saying? Yes, in the hospital, you know, working with folks in the hospital, and and, um, you know, just seeing how fatigued they are, but they're driven. The hospitals are understaffed, but yet there are certain folks that will do whatever it takes. We'll show those later, Eric. Those are for the later clip. Thank you. Um, most of us understand that work can be fulfilling, but it also can be unfulfilling. When we give our best efforts to something and we don't see any results, we lose heart. That tired feeling isn't just bone deep, it's spirit deep. Arthur Max Lucado, maybe you've heard of him before, he tells of the story of a man named Joseph Crater. 
a New York Supreme Justice who disappeared in August of 1930. Carter was just 45 years old at the time. He had gone to dinner with some friends one night, and after he left the restaurant, he hopped in a taxi and rode away, never to be seen again. No evidence turned up to explain Justice Carter's disappearance, but on the night he disappeared, he left a check for a large amount of money for his wife. Attached to the check was a note. It read, I am very weary, love Joe. I am very weary, love Joe. That's sad, isn't it? Sometimes the tiredness, it runs spirit deep. And it steals away our joy, our peace, our hope. And that's not what God intended for our lives. Our God is a creative God. And God made us for a purpose for peace and for hope and joy so that spirit deep tiredness poisons the life that God intended us to have. That's why we can relate to Simon Peter and the other disciples in our Bible passage from today. Crowds of people have come to the shore of the lake to hear Jesus preach. On the edge of the lake are the fishing boats that have come in after a long night's work. Professional fishermen in Jesus' day lowered large nets into the lake. In the dark of night, the fish couldn't see the nets, so the school of fish were easier to catch at night. Unfortunately, Simon Peter and his colleagues had an unsuccessful night, and they had a lot of unsuccessful nights, by the way, at catching. Jesus climbed into Simon's boat, and he asked him to float out a short distance from the shore. After Jesus finished teaching to the people on the shore from the boat, he told Simon Peter to sail out into deeper waters and let the nets down again. Now, put yourself into Simon Peter's shoes. He just finished working pretty much all night with no results. In addition to being tired and ready to go home, he's probably frustrated that his hard work didn't pay off. He was tired, and he was quite, he was quite ready to quit, and now Jesus is telling him how to do his job. Simon answers, Master, we've worked all night long, and we've caught nothing. But because you say so, I will let the nets down. And so now, Sally just referenced it, we're going to get to watch the clip from The Chosen of the Miracle of the Fish. Are you ready? All right, got your popcorn? Got your Coke? No, you don't have any of those things. You don't need them. Put that down for a catch. A little farther out. I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. That's your word. I 
I told you. I told you. I told you. brother and the baptizer <laughs> you are the Lamb of God yes I am depart from me I am a sinful man you don't know who I am the things I've done don't be afraid Simon I'm sorry we, we've waited for you for so long we believe but my faith how sorry <laughs> Lift up your head, fisherman. <laughs> what do you want from me? Anything you ask, I will do. Follow me. as well. Yes, you, James and John, come, follow me. I'll take the fish to the market and settle up Simon's death. I'll get some help to fill both of these boats. Are you sure? Yes, go. What will you tell Ima? <laughs> We've just been called by the man we prayed for our entire lives. And you ask me, what will I say when you miss supper? <laughs> go, now. could tell you that story over and over, but it would not have the same effect as watching that. That's The Chosen, folks. It's just a powerful series, and our, our men and women's Bible studies are, are, are doing that study, watching those videos and having discussion, and it's really, 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 really powerful. So in this story, Jesus gives us a gift. He shows us how to heal a tired spirit. For example, one thing we learn from this story is that doing meaningful work can heal a tired spirit. Spirit. A great way to stay energized and effective in your work and in your life is to seek to do something that you truly believe in. There are things we do in this church that we believe in and that we feel God is using us to make a difference in. I'll show you some more of these clips. There we are again with the hospital clips. Let's keep going. Um, there's a sack lunch brigade making a difference, and there's joy in that, joy in making those lunches and, and writing notes on those bags and, and sending it to these various organizations in the area to be enjoyed by all. Um, an opportunity to pray over hospital staff and, and encourage them to keep pressing forward and, and making sure that they treat every single patient with quality care as a sacred human being. More of those bags, hand-done hand artwork on these bags. And I was talking with um, a representative from um, the Hope House uh, the other day. And she was telling me how much the residents, especially the children, appreciate the messages on the bag and um, the stuff, the notes inside the bag. Let's keep going, please. Um, I didn't put this one in there earlier, but there's the Eli Allen restaurant he works at. That's, I guess that's right after the Braves won it all. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Right after the Braves won it all. You know, fulfilling work, knowing that you're making a difference and getting to have a picture there. Um, that's fun. Yeah. So another way to heal a tired spirit is to catch God's vision for your life. You've heard me say several times before, God has a plan for your life. In no way is life meaningless. You are here for a reason. And to invigorate your life, pray that God will show you that reason. That's what I mean when I say we need to catch God's vision for our life. Pastor Mike Slaughter once noted that people have a tendency to view life either through a microscopic lens or a telescopic lens. If you view life through a microscopic lens, then you're focusing on your current circumstances 
and your current challenges and your current stresses. You, you're focused on the details of the now. And that gets pretty overwhelming, doesn't it? But people with a telescopic lens, they see a bigger picture for their lives. They're not stressed out or trapped by their current circumstances. They look forward to what God is creating in the future. Whereas microscopic people focus on the problems, telescopic people see the possibilities. When Jesus told Simon Peter to row out to deeper waters and cast his nets again, Simon said, Master, we've worked hard all night long and we've caught nothing. That's a microscopic response. But because you say so, I will let down my nets. That's the moment that Simon opens himself up to Jesus' leading, and Simon and his colleagues catch so many fish that they have to load them onto two boats. Simon is so ashamed of his doubts that he falls on his knees at Jesus' feet, and he said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. But Jesus didn't do this to shame Simon. He did it to share with Simon a new vision for his life. Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Jesus is talking to us as well as to Simon Peter. Don't be afraid, he says to us. From now on, you will fish for people. Whatever work you're doing, whatever hobbies you have, whatever you find yourself doing, your primary purpose now is to bring people to God. That's your primary purpose. Your primary purpose in your home, in your workplace, in your school, in your hobbies, in your passions, in your relationships is to share the love and truth of Jesus Christ with others. That's the new vision that God has for your life. It's like something interesting that I read about our country's space program recently. It seems that when NASA, NASA engineers sent the, sent the Perseverance rover on a historic mission to Mars in 2020, they had a coded message in the rover's parachute. The parachute had an unusual red and white pattern. Alan Chin announced that this strange pattern held a secret message. Then he challenged folks to find and decode the secret message. It only took six hours for internet professionals all over the country to find and decode the message on the rover's parachute. The message was, dare to do mighty things. Dare to do mighty things. That's what Jesus is saying to Simon. You're looking at life through a microscopic lens. You only see if you've caught enough fish to feed your family and turn profit. Catch my vision for your life. I want to work through you to share the presence and power of God. I want you to change lives. And that's exactly what those weary fishermen did. They changed lives and they changed the world. So the second thing we learn from today's Bible passage is catching God's vision for your life can heal a tired spirit. And the final thing that we learn from this passage, more than anything else, committing your life to Jesus can heal a tired spirit. How does our Bible passage end today? After Jesus offered Simon and his friends a new vision for their life, we read, So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. They didn't go home and catch up on that missed sleep. They didn't go out and sell that big catch of fish. Zebedee probably did that. They just left everything to follow Jesus. Everything, what they had on, is what they took with them. Is it possible that your tired spirit is a result of not committing your whole life to Jesus' lordship? Your successes, your failures, your strengths, your weaknesses, your doubts, your security, your future, your identity... Are you still wrestling over committing everything to Jesus' plan and purposes? Because when you commit your entire life to Jesus Christ, you're also trusting Jesus with the results of your life. He's offering to work through you to change lives with his power and his message of love. You don't have 
to do the work alone. There is a sure antidote for a tired spirit. He will work through you to bring others to God. Leave the results to him. When you become tired, discouraged, or filled with doubt about whether or not your efforts are making any difference, please remember this. Jesus' disciples, they faced harassment, rejection, imprisonment, and even death for their work. But they also convinced thousands of people that Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior of all of humankind. All of humankind. They planted churches all over the Roman Empire, Africa, and Arabia. Today, over one billion people from every race, every nation, call themselves Christians. And there are Christian churches in almost every corner of the world. Did you notice that I said almost every corner of the world? And you and I are here today because of the work of Simon Peter, Paul, and the other disciples, the apostles, who committed their work and their lives to the message and ministry of Jesus Christ. And you know what? Now it's your turn. Commit your life to Jesus and see how he can give you a new sense of vitality and use you to make a difference in the world. I want you to grasp something this morning, and I put this out on social media all over it. And I hope folks will grasp this. That life is given from Christ. The life that Christ lives in the Father is the same life He lives in you and me. I mean, listen to this from Colossians 3, verses 3 through 4. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I want you to grasp that this morning, folks. The life that Christ lives in the Father is the same life he lives in you and me. Christ does not live one life in the Father and another in you. His explicit words are, because I live, you shall also live. Because I live, you shall also live. One day you're going to realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. John 14 verses 19 through 20. As Christ is in the Father, so you are in him and he in you. This is the key to getting over your, your tiredness and your weariness and your worn outness. And that's not even a word. I just threw it out there. Resting in the Lord is how you get over that, folks. You don't just get over it. You conquer it to where it is not going to have power over you anymore. That's the key. It's necessary that you have daily quiet time. Your devotions are great. Scripture reading is great. But you need to set time in your schedule to be alone and in the presence of just God in his presence. Jesus didn't. He didn't take all the tablets and scrolls out there in the woods with him. He just went. Just he and the Lord. Most of the time when I'm out exercising, and I've, I've taken my phone a few times because there were some podcasts and sermons that I wanted to listen to, but most of the time, most of the time you know what I take with me when I go to walk or run or exercise? Nothing. Because I got the Lord. Do I need anything else? Is anybody else going to tell me anything that I need to know better than what the Lord's going to tell me when I'm with the Lord in my quiet time? Think about it, folks. Have you spent time just in the presence of the Most High God to allow Him to speak to you and fill you up with His supernatural energy and strength and peace that transcends all understanding? The Lord reveals himself more and more and more to you when you take time to be still in his presence and just listen. He's filling you with his supernatural energy and his power. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, 
who is in your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You are alive because he is alive. You are here because he is here. He's covering you right now, right now with his Holy Spirit. He is in this place. He's with you in your living room, in your basement, in your vehicle. He's out there with you under that tent right now. And he's saying, I want to be with you. I want to be close to you. I never leave you. I never will forsake you. But you have walked away from me. You have put your trust in other things other than me. And that's why you're tired and you're weary and you're worn. You need me. You cannot do this life alone. Your family needs you. Your children need you. Your spouse needs you. Your coworkers need you. Your friends need you. They need you to be up. They need you to be filled with the glory of God. And he can give you that today. Do you want to receive that? Let's do that together. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready, willing and able to be rejuvenated and restored and delivered and made whole? We had a healing service a few weeks ago and it was magnificent. But this time is a reminder that we need to breathe deep the breath of God and let His air fill our lungs. Let His life create in us clean hearts and pure hearts and new hearts and new minds and new attitudes. And His priorities are not our own priorities. For His ways are not our ways, neither are His thoughts our thoughts. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are His thoughts above our thoughts and His ways above our ways. He is glorious and He is marvelous and He wants you, all of you right now. And He wants to fill you up and He wants to relieve you of that broken spirit. And He's not going to give you a bunch of medication. He's not going to require you to do this or that. All He's asking you to do right now is to surrender fully to the Lordship of His Son, Jesus Christ. And here's how we do that, folks. I want you to breathe in with me right now. Breathe in the breath of God. Now breathe out his praise. And to yourself and to God, I want you to say silently, Lord, I surrender my weakness, my tiredness, my weariness, my brokenness to you. Lord, I cast all my cares upon you. Lord, I know you're big enough to handle it all. Lord, I am tired. I'm tired right now. I'm asking you, Lord, to rejuvenate me, to renew me, to fill me with your supernatural power. Hold your hands out and receive it. Lord, give me your supernatural power and strength. Help me keep my eyes fixed and focused on you as I run this race, Lord, that I never get tired. And when I do feel tired and weary, Lord, prompt me to go and rest. Lord, if I even need to go and just lay down, Lord, just lay down, I will do it, Lord, and rest in you. And if my mind is racing of all the things I got to do and I'm crunching numbers in my head and thinking about my taxes and thinking about this and that, Lord, fill my mind with thoughts of you and Scripture. And if I don't know the Scripture by heart, Lord, just the words that I remember my grandmother saying to me, Lord, that are from your word. Help me speak your truth. I surrender, Lord. If you prayed that and you committed that to the Lord, He has just released you from all that's holding you back and keeping you from reaching your full potential because you're so tired, so stressed. And now I want you to claim this. God who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. He who started a work will be faithful to complete it. He's working on your behalf. So slow down, my weary friends, and live the life he's called you to live. Don't let anyone take that from you. Don't let a job take that from you, a career take that from you. Because he needs you to fulfill your number one purpose, and that's to bring others to Jesus Christ and to share his love, his grace, and his mercy. Thank you, Lord, 
for setting us free today and filling us with your power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Last song, church. Let's stand together. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So, Lord, we ask you to go before us today and every day. Hem us in on every side, front, behind, side to side. And Lord, as we sing to you, we ask you even now to cover us in all that we do. And may we find our refuge in you alone. Jesus. <laughs>
and now receive the benediction. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.